Well, hello everyone and welcome to Facebook Friday. So this one is gonna be a little bit longer because um, I had some revelations in less than 24 hours and I wanted to share them with you because I think they're really important because the majority of you are administrative and executive assistants. So what happened is we decided to do a survey of administrative assistants who have been a part of our group and follow us and have attended some of our events regarding our upcoming in-person conference. So this year we have decided we are doing our in-person event again the end of October. We're also going to live stream that event. So we're at a point where we needed to get a feel who is coming, who isn't coming, who would like to come but they don't know yet, why don't they, why do they think they can't come, and a list of questions. And so the big revelation, because I love numbers and I like to look for trends and see what's going on so I know how I can help assistants, is what amazed me is um, those who are not interested in attending. So there were some that definitely didn't want to, but we asked them, is it because you don't feel safe traveling out of state? Your company's not permitting travel? You can't get financial approval? So 23% of our total respondents said no because they can't get financial approval. Okay, that's pretty big. And especially when you hear it with the next thing I'm gonna tell you. So another question we asked is, yes, I would like to attend in person, but I don't know yet because my company isn't allowing business travel. We may be going back to the office. I might not be able to get away. I don't feel comfortable attending. And of course, another option was, I don't know if I can get financial approval. 41 answered that. So 23.5% of our respondents said they wanna come, but they're not sure if they can get approval. Now stay with me, because this isn't about selling you on conference. This is about selling you on how to fight for what you want and how you need to speak to executives to help support what you want. So if you look at this combination, 50% of our survey respondents, their answers and not being able to come or not sure if they can come were around financial. That's pretty revealing because what it says to me, here's what it says to me as an outsider, as a previous assistant of 20 years, and as an executive, that yes, out of that 50% is probably a small percentage of companies who really don't have the budget. I mean, really, they're strapped. You know, the past year was a pandemic, but there's other companies that have done extremely well the past year. And the larger percentage, I guarantee it's because the assistant doesn't know how to sell or persuade or convince to get support or just gives up too easily. So I want to share with you, I, have, I typed my ideas out today because it's that important you know, for me to share with you what you need to do in the future. And I'm not just talking about getting support for a conference or training or maybe to belong to an association. You know, those are all financial investments. So you have to work a little harder when it's a financial investment. But you might be trying to sell your executive on the idea or you may need to sell, you know, sell them on this idea of picking up the phone and talking to you during the week. A lot of assistants are struggling with that, with working from home. Maybe it's to convince them on a new process or new idea. So 
let's go. I have these ideas and I want to share them with you and kind of help teach you on how to get more of what you deserve. Um, if you look at the value that you bring to an organization, right? So first of all, you have to really believe in what you are trying to sell your executive on. Like I said, it doesn't always mean money, it could be something else. But you have to really believe that it's good for you, that it's good either for your team relationship or it's good for your company. Because I know, and having my own business for 30 years, and it's still around after all these years, that I truly believe in what I'm doing. And I work at that. And it's a very different feeling when you really believe in something. You don't give up easily. You figure different ways around it. And you keep after it. So hello, Anita. Thank you. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Secondly, do your due diligence. It's not enough, like if it's a class or a conference, let's say, because conferences are coming back big time, it's not enough to give them a list of topics or the brochure, you know, and we have all these tools for assistants to use. But from an executive's perspective, I'm talking from my perspective, it's about the outcomes. So when you look at that list, and I even pulled an example to help you. So one of our speakers, Joanne Linden, who I love, I've known her for years. She was a CEO's assistant for a very long time and now has her own training company. Her title is Dare to Dream Big and Succeed Through Goal Setting. Now, if I were an executive and you brought this to me, the Dare to Dream Big, that's kind of fuzzy to me, kind of feely to me. So that might not be as appealing. And if I were the assistant, I would focus on the succeed through goal setting, okay? There's three bullet points. Here's what I would do with these. It says conceptualize what you really want from your career. So what's the outcome of that? In other words, if I learn how to conceptualize what I really want from my career, what's the outcome? I will be clear with my goals. I will know what areas I need to develop and grow in. Do you see, that's what I'm gonna sell my executive on, not, oh, conceptualize, okay? Another one, another bullet point under this topic is determine whether your goals align with your values. Well, companies are all about values. And what I would do is take that and think about how does that benefit me? How does it benefit my leader? How does it benefit the organization? And I would attach it to values. The next one, I love the third bullet under Joanne is achieving work-life balance. That is a hot topic today with human resource departments, business owners, executives. They are very concerned about creating work-life balance. I just read a 40-page study by Stillcase, the office environment company. I worked for them as a secretary in the 80s. They did 32,000 responses they got from 10 countries. And they're talking about the hybrid environment and where we're going. And it is about having employees want more work-life balance, even though they've been working from home, but they're not getting the balance. That some of them are working even more, right? So that's what I would tie into, you know, as an assistant trying to convince my executive, I would talk about the outcome of that and how you know, I know that uh, organizations are very interested in this and I'll learn those tools. So number three, strategically map out how you're going to present the information. This is why some assistants get certain things where others do not. You have to be very strategic, especially, you know, when it's something that's important. And so what do I mean by strategic? 
are you going to use a PowerPoint presentation? I mean, how do you want to present this information? So it's not only the information, which we'll talk about, but how do you want to present the information? Are you going to use charts or graphs? You know, I had an executive who loved charts and graphs. And so if I wanted to convince him or show something to him, that's what I used to communicate with him. Um, still within the strategy, you've got to have plenty of reasons why this is worth it. Whether again, to the two of you, you know, what's in it for them? What are they going to get out of it? If they're the ones helping make that investment, whether it's time or money. So if you're just joining me, um, I'm going through some steps. I'm on step number three on how to kind of get more of what you want. Um, especially when it comes to any type of financial support. So also under strategy, you want to tie into what's going on right now in your workplace, what's going on in our world, um, your company's situation, and not only right now, but nine months from now, because leaders, top leaders, they're future focused. So if I want to have this learning or training or education, it's not only how it serves me now, but the future, I've looked nine months out, here's how it's going to help, help me prepare for that. Now, again, if it's a process that you're trying to convince your executive on, or again, assistants always wish they had more time with their executives, it's not only how will it help you now, right? Doing a better job, getting clarification on responsibilities and tasks and expectations. But how does that help over the next nine months? Well, one, it helps you to be more proactive. So if you're always being clear about expectations and wants and needs, now I can be more proactive, which helps me prepare for the future. Do you see you've got to go, you've got to go beyond and because this is how executives think. So if you want to get a yes to things, you've got to think like an executive. Um, the next, number four, when money is involved, and trust me, I'm a business owner, okay? When money is involved, you've got to break it down, right? You've got to be, so I've got the example of the conference, okay, our conference this year. I wanted to use a tangible scenario for you. I've got it broken down. So here's what I would do if I were an executive assistant. And these are things I did do when I was assistant. I would have the conference cost, estimated travel. I would go on the even higher side with it. Ground transportation, my hotel, my tips, my food, my dinner. So, I came up with real numbers to show you. So I would say to my executive, you know, we've estimated it's $3,110 for eight and a half hours of focused learning with subject matter experts, techniques and ideas that would increase my productivity by at least 25%. I mean, what's the value of that? How much do you make per hour? And if you increase by 25%, do you see, this is how you need to talk to these executives. I would also say, plus, I'm getting valuable insights from the other attendees. There are about four hours of planned networking throughout three days. Lots of opportunities for me to discuss ideas with other assistants, to learn what they're doing. We could talk about what the speakers talked about and talk about and share how we're gonna execute those ideas when we get back to our offices. The learning, you know, doesn't only take place from a main stage. It's, it's those side conversations. And what I would say to an executive is as an executive or as a manager, who you've probably attended many things yourselves, which they probably have, conferences or training, or they go to their offsite retreats, all the time, I'm sure you know the value of those side conversations. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear the difference? 
So, and also what I would add in, in this part for my executive, I would say, and this year, Office Dynamics has included six extra sessions post-conference, therefore bringing my education to 14.5 hours. Number five, don't use the word costs, okay? Or even if you, you know, as an assistant, I pushed for a salary increase. Um, I wanted support to belong to an association, to go to a three-day training course in New York. And, you know, 40 years ago, that was unheard of. It really was. So you don't want to say cost. You know, you use words like investment because it really is. It's an investment in you. And if I invest in you as my assistant and I see results, I'm going to benefit. So that's another idea. Um, also, as far as your words, instead of saying trading, I would say education. Okay, I'm a big fan of words. Those of you who know me, one word could change everything for you. Number six, of course, if you, it's support for training or education that you've gotten or a conference, then you better come back and show that they are getting a return on their investment. Obviously, you really wanna make sure that they see the results, how you're implementing the ideas, and even share those ideas with them. Um, number seven, if your success, let's say that you do this and you have a success, if your success was more time with your executive, so maybe that's what you are trying to convince them of, then show your executive that when they make time for you, it's worth their time. Meaning, okay, I've set aside time to meet with you. Now go through things quickly, show me you're organized, show me you're ready to go, be precise, be concrete. And if I see the benefit, then I'm gonna be more inclined to have more one-on-one -on -one time with you. Does that make sense, I hope? Um, if your success was to get support to start an administrative team, make sure your team is really working on projects of value. I know uh, several administrative teams in different companies. They're already starting to map out ideas for succession planning for assistance. They work on the, the corporate training, titles, competencies, all of those things. So you want to, again, keep showing the value. Um, let me see what else I have. All right, so to kind of wrap this up, I am on your side, okay? I am. And I, I feel like I see too many assistants who don't get what they deserve and want, you know, in terms of that support uh, for training or education, or other things, and it just shouldn't be that way. So I hope I gave you some tools today and specific ideas on creating more wins for yourself, okay? All right, a couple quick things to wrap this up. Speaking of conference, we have made a great decision this week. We are extending early, early bird until June 30th. And we want this to work for people. We want you to come and we realize people are just starting to get out and get comfortable. And then our world-class assistant, my summer course starts June 8th. We already have 22 assistants signed up from around the world. So if you wanna join us, I'm gonna be doing the summer session. Um, Lisa Olson's doing our spring session. And then our executive support series, if you're not aware of that or you haven't had time to check it out, please do so. You can go to our website, officedynamics.com. And our next free webinar will be in June. Uh, we don't have one in May. The schedule is just really full in May, but I promise we'll have some a good webinar. I think we might even do two webinars in June. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. Thank you so much.